Bible that some people will ever read is your life. There's a lot of folk in church who are not lovable because they don't have enough Jesus in them. Dr. T. Delbert and First Lady Jasmine Robertson oversee as Bishop Paul S. and Dr. Deborah B. Morton from Changing Generation invites you to worship with us in person in the sanctuary or join us virtual at our new Decatur location, 4185 Snapfinger Woods Drive, Sundays at 11 a.m. and Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Or worship with us in person in the sanctuary or join us virtual from Greater St. Stephen, Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Central Time. One church in two states, Atlanta, CAGnow.org, and New Orleans, houseofgreater.org. Coming up on Greater Change Ministry. And, and the, the, the question becomes, for the well-intending believer that you're trying to serve the Lord with gladness and love on God with all that you know how. What encouragement can the word of the Lord give to us? Prophet, what can you say to us in this time? And I want to let those of you know that in times of like these, like never before, you're going to need the word of the Lord. Well, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice, be glad about it. Dr. T. Delbert Robinson here. Elder Jasmine Morton Robinson. And we are your host today of the Greater Change Telecast. What a privilege and an honor it is to be able to bring the Word of God into your home, into your situation, wherever you may be. We want to just, first of all, thank you for staying tuned and locking in and receiving from what God is doing in our midst. Yes. And you get the opportunity to hear from God's finest mm. Bishop Morton, Dr. Deborah B. Morton, wow. First Lady <laughs> Elder Jasmine, and yours truly. And today, it will be no less. We're going to go in and receive the word of God at this time. You keep it locked right here. We'll be back after this. Matthew uh, chapter 13, verse number 11 says, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. 12, to those who are listening to my teaching, more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But this is the careful part. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. 13 says, and that is why I use parables, for they look but they really or they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. And it fulfills the prophetic word or the prophecy of Isaiah that says, I'm at verse 14, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. And 15, and here's where I really want to invite you to zone in. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear. They have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand. And they cannot, and this is the sad part, but I want to pull a, a piece of this out of here. They cannot turn to me and let me heal them. And as I've been in prayer and, and, and a time of personal consecration, if you all would leave that on the screen for me just for a second here, because the Lord said, if there's anything that you can command the changing church and those that are listening to us to do in this season, while you are implementing New Year's resolutions that you may forget by February 1st, in all of your resoluting, and in all of your resolve, it's that phrase there at the end. Turn to me and let me heal you. Whatever you're going through, the word of the Lord in this passage that I've read, the Lord is saying, turn to me and let me heal you. Now, the same pericope of scripture in the Message Bible, and I want you to hear the variation of the language, the Message Bible 
the, the author that is credited with pulling it together is a theologian by the name of Eugene Peterson. So when you read the Message Bible, look what it says there at verse, same pericope. He replied, you have been given insight to God's kingdom. You know how it works. What you are you talking about, Jesus, you believers in the room? You already have knowledge of how it works. Not everybody has this gift. Will you nudge your neighbor and tell them I'm different? Tell them, tell them I'm different. Not only, not only does everybody not have this gift, but everybody don't even have this kind of insight. Now look, notice what he says there. I'm preaching already. It has been given to you. This knowledge and this insight is a gift. But those that don't have it, they have not received the gift. So you cannot continue to bunch them up with you because you are separate. You should not even want to watch it here. It goes back to what the old church used to say. And the, it was such a touchy statement. You are in the world. I know it's old school, but you've got to admit and you have to look at yourself in the supernatural mirror and say, even though I'm in the world, I'm not of the world. Verse number 12. Here's where it gets sticky. Whenever someone has a ready heart for this, the insights and the understanding is going to flow freely. But, contradiction, a cancellation. But if there is no readiness, the little bit you have, Peterson said, if there's any trace of receptivity, the little bit you have is going to soon disappear. I'm going to get into this in a second here. There are going to be people that look like they were so anointed yesterday and the next time you see them, their oil will be dusty. Not because they're a bad person, but there was no readiness in heart. Lay your hands on your heart and say, Lord, make me ready. Lord, make me ready. So the little bit that they have, that disappears. And that's why I tell stories, he said, verse number 13, or parables. The parable creates, thank you, Holy Ghost. The words of Jesus in your heart are set to create readiness. You have to be able to hear the Lord in this season from the inside out. He's creating readiness, he says, to nudge the people toward a welcome awakening. In their present state, they can stare till doomsday and not see it. Peterson is right in this thing here. He, he says, listen, they're blue in the face and they still don't get it. And I don't want Isaiah's forecast to be repeated all over again. Your ears are open, but you don't hear a thing. Your eyes are awake, but you don't see a thing. But look at what is happening in this text. Don't miss out on verse number 11 because verse number 11 holds the gist of my teaching today. You are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. I want to tag this teaching, we have the inside track. Looking at this entire pericope of scripture, the word of the Lord came to me yesterday as I was on my way here. And the Lord said, tell the people of God, son, that they have the inside track. Yes. This is why I can say change is not on the way. Y'all, yeah. some of y'all get it already? Yeah. Change is here. But you have to open your spiritual ears and your spiritual eyes to see that we have the inside track. 
Will you nudge your neighbor really quickly and tell them I got the scoop? <laughs> tell them, tell somebody else I got the kingdom scoop. I, I know the business. I, I got, I got insight in the back room, in the back office of the kingdom of God. And there are four things that I want to, or rather three things that I want to uh, lift up before you. But you got to admit now, come on, eight days into the new year, this has been a crazy year already. Now God is good. Yes, He is. I'll, I'll help you because you don't want to help me yet all the time. And all the time, God is good. I know you know your cliches. Some of y'all better than you know your Bible. But eight days in, it's been a crazy year. Death. The sight of death. The news of death. I don't want to go to rehashing politics. I mean, if there was ever a picture of how bad do you really want it? Come on, elders, help me out. 17 elections? Man, I would have went home and said, maybe this job just ain't for me. But when you want something so bad, you are watching high-level officials sell their soul. For a bowl of beans. Tell your neighbor, don't sell out in this year. And be careful because while you're saying it, it's easy to do. This is why I have to remind you this time and space we call 2023. It's no doubt we are living in some unusual times. In fact, let me say it another way. It's the most unusual of all times. This is... This is the making of a new era. Whether you want to receive it or not, we are in a new era, an uncharted zone. We're at an impasse of convergence. What are you saying to me, Pastor? I'm saying what was no longer is. And what is to come remains to be seen. You really can't peg it because time is now filled with the swiftness of all swift transitions and, and the, the, the question becomes for the well intending believer that you're trying to serve the Lord with gladness and love on God with all that you know how what encouragement can the word of the Lord give to us prophet what can you say to us in this time and I want to let those of you know that in times of like these like never before you're going to need the word of the Lord now, now you can say what you want, do what you want, feel how you want, but you're going to need his word. And the word of the Lord came to me for all interested parties to tell you we have the inside track. Look at it really quickly here because I want to be a good steward over my time and not overfeed you. Inside track number one because there's three ways to get into this. Inside track number one, notice the time of unusual revelation. We are living in a time of unusual revelation. Notice what Jesus said again. He said, you're permitted to get a mystery. You're permitted to get in on something that everybody is not in on. See, New Living Translation calls it the secret. I'm not talking about that book that came out all those years ago that had believers making vision boards. Y'all don't want to say nothing with me here. That was that man's revelation. But when Jesus said, you are permitted to receive a secret, he is talking about this Greek word, mysterion. And let me pause right there. Because I, I told you, you're your pastor as a prophet. I hear you in the Holy Ghost. Ain't nothing wrong with your vision board. Just make sure God is directing your eyes. Shall we continue with the sermon at hand? Y'all kill me in the Holy Ghost. What do you mean I can't have no vision board? I say you can't have it. I'm just saying be aware of who made it. Because the man who made it ain't thinking nothing about the Lord your God the way you're thinking about him. Oh, that's another story. Another day Jesus gives us this Greek word, mysterion. Note taker, grab it. It's the not so obvious dealings of God with the righteous. The Lord deals differently 
with the righteous. Can you make this confession over yourself quickly? Say it strong. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, when you acknowledge your identity, you immediately give the Lord permission to deal differently with you. See, because the righteous have some rights that other people don't have. Can I just call one? And you can name all some other ones. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. You don't have to beg for anything when you are the righteousness of God because all of your needs he will supply even before you ask him. Temptation said ain't too proud to beg. But the word says you don't have to beg when you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Seek ye first. Come on, talk the Bible to me in here. The kingdom of God, but not just his, his kingdom, but hunger and thirst after his righteousness. And if you hunger and thirst after it, the text says, ye shall be filled. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me. That's what that songwriter was talking about in that hymn, until I want no more. Will you tell your neighbor he's a provider? And if you're bold enough, tell somebody he provides for me because I'm the righteousness of God. As usual as that sounds to you, that's an unusual sound to a whole lot of people. And this is why I'm saying we are in a time of unusual revelation. Let me go one more further because somebody needs to know this. I'm prophesying right now, but I'm prophesying not in a way to give you a name it and claim it or blab it and grab it. I'm prophesying to the end that you will receive this memo of manifestation, this supernatural salutation. The Lord says, tell you, at this moment, all access has been granted. I'm not going to do the whole, let me say it again, because y'all didn't hear me, because I want a better shout. That's the statement. That's the prophecy. Will you tell your neighbor, all access has been granted. It's like a backstage pass. If your pass ain't right, you ain't getting backstage. But if you are the righteousness of God, in Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord to you is all access has been granted. Which brings me to my second point. This is a time of unusual readiness. Verse number 12 says, you're listening to the teaching and not just listening because you have ears, but your ear gate is connected to the chamber of your heart. If you will receive this in your heart, the text says more will be given. You don't get the more unless you give your heart to him in this year. Let me give you a newsflash. Coming to church is not enough. You got to come to church and give him your heart. So you come to church to get spiritually charged up. You hear the songs of worship. You hear the songs of praise. That's charging your spirit up to go out and face another seven days. This is the charging station. This is what your charger does for your cell phone. Because if you don't charge your cell phone, whether you pay the bill or not, whether you got good service or not, You'll be everywhere you go talking about, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? No, he can't hear you because you're not charged up. And then run with your bill. Pastor, I don't come to church, but I pay my tithes. Keep up the good work. But at some point in time, you cannot forsake, you got to not forsake the assembling of yourself. You got to come into the room with some other Holy Ghost filled believers 
and feel your neighbor nudging you and see the shout going on and hear the songs of Zion. You got to be able to come into the room and get charged up. I ain't nothing wrong with virtual church. We brought you into it and we're going to take you out of it and keep you right where you are. But it's mighty hard because I've tried to do it. It's hard to get charged up in your pajamas. Elders, it's hard to get charged on your pillow. I know how it goes. You lay in there trying to get charged up and you... Oh, Bishop dancing again. Oh, Pastor Rob still shouting. Oh, okay. Well, Pastor D just said, well, our first lady just ran across the pulpit. Okay. It's hard to get charged up on your pillow. But you got to be ready. I'll come back and finish this. I'll stop right here. Watch it here. A time of unusual readiness. The unprepared, this is a prophecy again. The whole thing is a prophecy that the Lord gave me. He said, son, tell the people the unprepared will start being stripped of their power right before your very eyes. But here's the oxymoron. Though they have been stripped, they will continue to go forth like they still got power. He said, the only thing that will keep them in power are believers that have been deceived. In other words, he's saying, you got to know when the power shifts, how to shift with the power in season and out of season. He called to mind 1 Samuel chapter 15. You read it when you get a chance. Samuel had been out. He was looking for Saul and the Bible says Saul was somewhere else building a monument to himself. And this season you ain't going to have to blow yourself up. Somebody else will do it for you. Saul is out building a monument. The prophet is looking for him. When he finds him, he says, I've been doing the will of the Lord. I've been doing everything God says. And the end of the story, Samuel said, listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. In other words, in this season, I'm getting ready to get out of here. If you're going to have the inside track, you're going to have to learn how to sacrifice your ego and obey the word of the Lord. When you look at somebody and tell them, I'm laying me on the altar this year. I'm sacrificing my ego. I'm not turning back. I'm not going to the left or the right. I'm going to stay focused in this year. It's not about me. It's all about him. Samuel passed his verdict. He says, you know what? Saul, the Lord is sick of you. And he's moving his hand off your life. He said, I'm about to strip you. And the Bible says that Saul was so distraught, he reached out and held on to Samuel's robe. And the robe began to tear. And while the robe was tearing, Samuel said, I don't care what you do. This torn robe is a symbol of your power. The Lord is about to strip you of all your authority. And Jesus said, if you are not operating with a ready heart, the little bit of anointing that you have is going to be stripped from you the same way Saul's kingdom was stripped from him. And God fired Saul, but he let him sit on the throne. It's a hard day when you've been accepted by people but fired by God. It will cause you to think you're all that and then some. You may have the blessing of the people, but the Lord said, my hand can't rest on your mess anymore. My hand can't rest on your foolishness anymore. When you look at somebody and tell them, you better obey God. Come on, tell three people around you, you better obey God. It's not doom and gloom. It's get right right now because you got the inside track. Tell somebody you got the scoop. Tell them, come on, tell them you got the scoop. Tell them you got the cheat sheet. Tell them you got greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. You got angels over you, angels under you, goodness and mercy following you, the Holy Ghost leading you. You got too much working for you for you to keep doing it your way. Way. 
it's an unusual time of readiness. And how do I get ready? I got to be ready in my heart. Well, my goodness, I know that word was such a blessing to your very soul. Pastor Robinson, will you pray for someone who may have heard it and they need that extra push to go forward? Absolutely, absolutely. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my sister. I thank you for my brother. I pray strength as a result of the word that yes. they heard. Give them the courage yes. to make the move that is needed to be made in their life. I give you praise now that because of this word, the quality of their life is being made better. By the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now listen to me really good. There's a telephone number on the screen right now. We have operators and a team standing by to minister to you. If this word has blessed you and you know that you need to accept Christ, you need to be recommitted to the body of Christ, uh, you want to get connected closer to God in some way, shape, form, or fashion, do not hesitate. Dial this number right now. Someone's going to partner with you in prayer, and I know that the quality of your life will be made better. Well, as I always say, we are never out of talk. We're never out of text, but we are out of time. So until this time next week, you keep it locked right here. Yeah. And in the meantime, and in between time, you do everything in your power to make it a, a greater, greater change. change. Bye for now. God's about to change some things and I'm here to tell you if you don't know about the fullness of the Holy Ghost I don't care how intelligent you are I don't care how much money you have I don't care what you have you need the fullness of the Holy Ghost and unfortunately what many folk have already started to do is to revert back to the old trifling ways you had before the pandemic because you didn't learn that God was trying to show us something God was trying to show you something bigger than yourself he was trying to show you something about what it really meant to be in relationship with him Next week on Greater Change Ministries. Uh, maybe I have about 20, 12 witnesses here today who know that your fight can lead to a miracle. Uh, your fight can lead to your deliverance. Your fight can lead to your rescue. Do I have about 12 people in the room who have been through some fights? And you know that you know who's fighting for you. Oh, my.